It says oh, starting shit. live video. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, you, you, Hopefully I'm not sideways. It's not there. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh perfect, perfect. Okay, a, yay. <laughs> it's smile. Okay, now we're there? We're good? Go? Yeah, it's perfect. Good. Okay, perfect. sorry, Start everybody. Over. Absolutely perfect. Okay. All right, well, okay. I don't know how much of that, whether or not I should just start, start again. Over. Just start over. Thank you, Bobby, for the phone call. He's our technician, apparently, from his house. Thank you for watching. <laughs> All right, just quick. I won't do it long again. Inscribe the word. If you did not get that, I will put it on Facebook or call me, and I can send you a copy of this month's uh, Inscribe the Word. Uh, why don't we open with a word of prayer and we'll get started. Because I think we really need to pray this morning. <laughs> anyway, Father, we just come before you now and I thank you again, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Lord, for uh, your goodness and your mercy, for loving us, for saving us, Lord. I thank you for the truths of your word. And I pray that they're a blessing to the ladies, Lord. I pray that nothing comes out of my mouth that would dishonor you, Lord. And I pray, Father, that um, you would just touch the hearts and lives of each one of us, Lord. Help us, Father, to truly understand, Father, how precious our Bible is and how good you've been, Lord, to give it to us and to preserve it, Lord. And, and I pray, Lord, that you would just be honored and that your name would be uplifted, Lord, today. Help those that are sick, Lord, and not feeling well. I pray for those, Lord, that are going through trials and, and difficulties even now, Lord, those that are out of work. I pray, Father, that you would help us to know how to be a blessing to one another, Lord, and, and that, Lord, you would draw us close to you. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week, we had said that the study would be on why memorize the scriptures. Um, as children in Sunday school, if you got saved earlier on in life and had the privilege to ascend, attend Sunday school and have a Sunday school teacher, then you know that you had a memory verse, either every week, depending on what grade you were in. I know here at church, in uh, kids' stuff, uh, they memorize scriptures. We have Master's Club, and we have our little ones that can memorize 20, 25 verses by the time uh, the year is done. And what a blessing. And somehow, as children, we understand, or at least are told that we need to memorize the Word of God. And, and have some sort of a, a program and a teacher and somebody to be accountable to. And we take the time as parents to teach our kids and memorize the Word of God with them. But somehow when we become adults, it's not a priority. Um, it becomes something that even myself, it's like the older you get, the harder it is to memorize. Uh, you hit a certain age and all of a sudden, like, you know, you forget names and where you put your coffee and you can't find your keys. and. The idea just of memorizing scripture just seems totally overwhelming. But God gives us the ability to do the things that he would have us to do. And it has nothing to do with us. And I hope that this study is a blessing because I think once we understand why we need to memorize, then we'll understand that everything that we do in the scripture, even sitting here and talking to you ladies and and having our ladies' Bible study, um, every word and everything that comes back to our, our remembrance and everything that we do is from God. Anyway, he gave us the Holy Spirit to bring all things to our remembrance. But what can he bring to our remembrance if I don't have anything in there for him to bring forward for me to share or to use? I'm getting ahead of myself and just told one of my points. Anyway, um, you probably automatically thought, um, the first verse, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And, and that is one of the main verses I think that we all use as to why we need to memorize scripture. Um, but I have a few points and I'm just going to go over and it's not going to be a long study, but um, I hope once we're done that you ladies let me know what verses the Lord put on your heart and where you started then to hide the word of God and to memorize it. First, the thing that the Lord showed me is why do we memorize scripture? Why should you memorize scripture? Well, the Bible actually does command us 
to hide God's word in our heart and to memorize the word of God. Way back in Deuteronomy, in chapter 6, verse 4 through 6, if you would like to turn there, Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting in verse 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. The Lord told the children of Israel, and this um, is the little inscription that um, the nation of Israel, the, the Jewish people, if you see the little mezuzah that they put on the side of um, their homes, and it's supposed to be a blessing, but a reminder to the people that enter that the people that live there are supposed to have the word of God and be able to share it and teach it with their children. And how do you do that? I have a Bible in front of me, but do I always have a Bible in front of me? Is it always under my arm or in my purse? What if you're out in the supermarket and your children ask you a question? What if you're riding in the car on the way to school? The Word of God, the truths of the Word of God are something that we, especially as adults, should have hidden so that at any point in time, I can share it with my children. It's ready for God to bring it back to my remembrance. But first, it is a commandment. It is something that God told us that we are supposed to do. Um, in the book of Proverbs, uh, I'm turning there because I don't have that actually written down. The book of Proverbs, um, and I think it's chapter 3. Chapter 3, he says, chapter 3, verse 1, Proverbs, he says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Because to God, our heart is always the most important thing. Why we do what we do. And how do I know what the right thing is to do if it's not in my heart? It becomes just something that is a work. If it's not God's word that's hidden, something that is precious to me. And God said, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Hiding God's word in your heart comes with a promise. He says, For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Keeping God's word and hiding it in your heart. And so that's my first point, is that we can just pass the thought along and use excuses, but at the end of the day, God told us that we're supposed to memorize and hide his word in our heart. Second reason is so that we can overcome sin. Um, Psalm 119 verse 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Having God's word memorized and hidden in my heart keeps me from sin. Because it reminds me when my, when me, my sinful flesh, desires to do something, and then that still small voice, the words of God come back into my remembrance, and it should stop me. It says it should stop me from from sin, from saying the wrong words, from thinking a bad thought. God's word in my heart keeps my mind clear. It helps me to meditate and to. Muse on those things that are good and not on those things that are evil. I mean, the Lord told us in Philippians the things that we should think on. Well, if I don't have my Bible in front of me, how do I think on those things? Well, I can bring back to my remembrance the words that are hidden in my heart so that even my thoughts can be right. Psalm 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Joshua 1, verses 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest.
God told the children of Israel to meditate on the word of God day and night. Well, how am I supposed to cook dinner and wash dishes and go food shopping and do laundry if I just have God's word in my hand? The way to meditate on God's word is to hide it in my heart and then roll it over in my thoughts all day so that I can have good success. God told me that these things are not because he's trying to make my life more difficult, but because meditating on the word of God and hiding it in my heart benefits me. God said, you'll have good success, that um, your way would be prosperous. It keeps me from sin. It keeps my thoughts right so that I don't lose my joy. I don't lose my peace. There is a load of benefit for me to have God's word in my heart. Not so that I can just stand up in front of a group of people and spew out, well, who knows the most verses. It's not a, a pride thing that you can pat yourself on the back. Because at the end of the day, I hide God's word in my heart. And when my heart needs it, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to my remembrance. I might not be able to quote it word for word to the people in front of me, or be able to bring back maybe a whole chapter of verses like somebody that's younger than me might be able to memorize scripture so much easier, easier than I could, or maybe than you could. But it's what's hidden in my heart that the Holy Spirit will bring back and my day will be blessed. My walk with the Lord will be better. My fruitfulness for the Lord, my usefulness for the Lord will be that much better. Um, God wouldn't have given us a commandment that he would not have given us the ability to carry it out. You'll find that the more scripture that you memorize, it's almost like a muscle, the easier it becomes to hide God's word in your heart. Pick one verse at a time, something that's important to you. How do you, if you want to be able to share the gospel with somebody and I don't have my Bible in front of me, it's God's word that changes the hearts of man, not my words. And so... Even for that, for the souls of men, I need to have God's word in my heart. Um, so first, it's a commandment. Secondly, that I might overcome sin. Thirdly, because we have the greatest example of someone who memorized the word of God. Jesus. He's our example. The walking word of God. It says in the book of John, John chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with him, with God. And then in the same chapter, in verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ and the Word of God are one and the same. And yet, when Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, he could have, he was God incarnate. He could have just uh, told him to go away. He could have, I don't know, done some miracle. He could have, uh, I don't know, he definitely was more powerful than Satan. The Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So he did not have to combat Satan's temptations um, the way that he did. He did it that way for our example. He went back at Satan. If you turn to Luke chapter 4, while I'm speaking, because I'd like to actually have us read those verses together, but Luke chapter 4, because this is our greatest example of what having the Word of God hidden in our heart, how it helps us. Jesus allowed himself to be in his physical, fleshly form, weak. He fasted for 40 days. I don't know if you guys have ever fasted, but sometimes just missing a meal. I don't know if you ever get hangry. Sometimes I get hangry. <laughs> um, and you get the hunger pangs, and you're irritable, and you're cranky. Well, my Savior went 40 days. He fasted. And so, physically, he was weak. It was probably, for you and I, that's when you and I are most easily tempted. 
because when we're physically sick or tired, hungry, um, then we're not watching. And that's when God's word inside of us is so important. But here, Luke chapter 4, we're going to read some of these verses because Jesus was tempted in three ways. In the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And in the book of 1 John, that's how the Bible says that you and I are tempted. So Luke chapter 4, look at verse 1. It says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And so the Bible tells you right there that it's forty days, and after the forty days he was hungry. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. You know what Jesus did? He didn't, he didn't like make lightning come down and tell Satan to go away. He was the example so that you and I would know how to fight temptation. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. When Jesus was tempted in a specific way, he had a verse to come back, and that's how he overcame Satan. That's how he overcame the temptation in the wilderness at that time. And that's how you and I, ladies, are supposed to overcome temptation. It's by having the Word of God ready, having it hidden in our heart before the temptation comes. And the devil tempted him again, it says, and taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And again, Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. Um, that's one of our greatest examples. When you are faced with temptation, the perfect, sinless Son of God did not try to be strong and just be a good Christian and just do good works. No, he quoted scripture. He had it hidden in his heart so that he didn't fall into temptation. He was the perfect Word of God. He knew it. And he could have overcome Satan in any way. But he did the best way to show us how you and I need to overcome temptation in this life is by having the Word of God hidden in our heart. Jesus Christ not only used the Word of God to overcome temptation, but he used it to teach. He had it hidden in his heart, and when it was necessary for him to teach somebody, to correct somebody, um, to reprove, in whatever way that my Savior needed to be a blessing. Um, he quoted scripture in Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. He said, for this is he, he's talking to them about who John the Baptist was. And he said, for this is he of whom it is written. And he went back to the Old Testament and quoted scripture. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Matthew chapter 21, verse 13. And Jesus said, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. He was reproving uh, the people in the temple. Um, in Mark chapter 14, verse 27, it says, And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. He tried to give scripture to prepare the disciples so that they weren't offended. He told them the things that were going to happen to prepare them. So he had the word of God hidden. He used scripture to show and to teach, to overcome temptation. He used scripture to teach. It wasn't just his words, even though he was the word itself. But he showed them that in order to be a blessing, in order to teach people, in order to reach somebody's heart, it's the word of God. And... I don't always have my Bible in my hand. So if I'm someplace, if I'm out of the store, if you're by yourself in the car and your heart needs to be comforted, somebody calls you up on the phone and needs counsel, well, it's not your counsel at the end of the day that's going to help somebody. 
It's the counsel from the Word of God that will encourage somebody, that will change your heart, that will lift a spirit. And even um, the Lord used the Word of God when he went to go get baptized to show that he was going to be obedient, that everything that he had done and that was about to do was out of obedience to his Father and because the Scripture told him that he needed to do it. Um, Matthew chapter 3, verse 15, And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Um, Jesus Christ was obedient to the word of God, and he used the word of God to show those men and women around him that he was being obedient to the word of God. He hid it in his heart, and he's our example. So, why memorize scripture? Well, one, because you're commanded to do so. Two, because that's what going to help you overcome sin and overcome your flesh. Three, because Jesus memorized scripture and gave us the greatest example that we could ever have to overcome temptation, to use the word of God to teach, to use the word of God um, to show our obedience. Um, we memorize so that the words of our mouth are pleasing to God. Wow. Psalm 19 verse 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Well, how do I know how to speak as a child of God? How do I know how to respond to my husband? How to teach my children? How do you know how to speak? Well, Bible says in Ephesians, let me turn there, in Ephesians, one of my favorite verses, chapter 4, at the end of the chapter, you guys have probably memorized this too, um, or at least uh, very familiar with this verse, but Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Well, how do I know what my communication is supposed to be? Well, my Bible tells me that the words out of my mouth, if somebody is not going to be benefited by them, then those words should not come out of my mouth. That cuts me off from gossip and, and from backbiting and all of those things that if at the end of the day, Somebody is not going to get a blessing out of what's coming out of my mouth, is not going to be edified, then the words should not come out of my mouth. So why hide God's word? Why memorize? Because it keeps my words pleasing to God. It keeps me sweet when I speak. Psalm 49, verse 3. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if in my heart I have God's word hidden, well then most likely what comes out of my mouth is going to be pleasing to my Savior. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6. Let your speech, it's one of my favorite verses, let your speech be always with grace. That means in every way with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. How could you be ready to give anybody an answer of the hope that is within you if you don't have God's word memorized, if you don't have it hidden in your heart? Well, if somebody wants to know, well, why are you saved? Why did you call upon the Lord to save you? Well, my opinion doesn't matter. It's what the Word of God has to say. But what does it mean to be saved? Well, I need my Bible to tell people what it means to be saved. Why I is it, uh, needed to be saved? Because I'm a sinner. Because there's none righteous. Because my Bible tells me how to get to heaven and how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I know that from reading God's Word. But the person in front of me may not have ever opened up a Bible. And so having God's word hidden in my heart gives me the opportunity to give everybody that God presents 
the bruise in front of me for me to be able to tell them how to be saved and to give them a reason for the hope, for that hope, that blessed hope that someday I'm going to have a home in heaven. I need to be ready to give that answer to every, anybody who comes before me. And then lastly, for comfort. One, to comfort others. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You know, there's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people going through trials. But you know what? The Lord is returning someday. And God left us a book to give us hope and for us to use for one another to give comfort, to comfort one another. And he told us, wherefore comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. I need to use God's word to edify and to uplift and to encourage my brothers and sisters in Christ. I need to use God's word to comfort and encourage my own heart. David comforted himself on his bed. At night, he meditated on God's word. Well, my light is out. I'm laying there. It's dark. How am I comforting myself with God's word? Well, the Lord's going to bring it back to my remembrance, and I'm going to hold on to those precious promises that he gave me, those precious truths that encourage us in dark times, in times of suffering, in times of heartache. Psalm 119, verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. It made me alive, David said. Psalm 119, verse 76. Let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to thy word unto thy servant. And then Psalm 63, verses 3 through 6. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. I encourage you, ladies, to hide God's word in your heart. In my thoughts is the place that I always get myself in trouble. I'm sure you do too. And the only thing that can set your thoughts straight and keep you on the right path, help you make good decisions, is the Word of God. And having it, having it hidden in your heart, having it available for the Holy Spirit to bring it back to your remembrance in times of heartache, in times of sadness, in difficult circumstances, even in joyous circumstances so that you are ready to give God the glory. You need to have God's word hidden in your heart. God will give you the ability to do the things that he has for you to do. And I encourage you. I hope um, that you'll take a chapter. My recommendation, I tell some ladies, start with Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not wither. God will, what a blessing to be able to hide the word of God in your heart. Start with Psalm 1. That's a great psalm to hide in your heart and to memorize. If, take one verse a week. I encourage you, take one verse a week and truly hold on to it. Write it on a piece of paper. Carry it around. I use index cards. It's great things. Put the verse on an index card and put it on your, your dashboard in the car. Put it by the sink so that you can just repeat it. Some people like to write the Word of God out to help them memorize it. Whatever works for you, for it to be something that's hidden, but have a goal. Set yourself a goal. Um, one verse a week, maybe one verse a day. Maybe find yourself uh, a partner, somebody that you can be accountable with to memorize the Word of God. And I would love for you to be able to tell me 
what you're working on next time I see you or even just in the comments. But um, I hope this was a blessing. Uh, I look forward to next Tuesday seeing you ladies. Uh, I would think our next study next week should be on on the next study so uh, the next time we get together maybe this week you ladies can work on um, what the role of a woman is in a home just what our roles are as ladies that might be a blessing um, for us and maybe that's something that we'll go over okay thank you i hope you have a good rest of the day and god bless